Aloha, this is going to be a leftist breakdown of some right-wing propaganda. The presenter in this video is going to do some Ben Shapiro, Charlie Kirk type stuff. Go with some young kids that aren't quite ready for his propaganda. So at first, we're going to go over warrior training, how cops are trained to actually kill people. Second, we're going to let this guy cook, let him do his thing and talk to these kids. And third, we're going to go over the Dunning-Kruger effect and talk about how people who don't have the knowledge like to speak on it and people who do have the knowledge tend to know that they don't tend to know what they don't know so they don't want to speak on it too much so this guy is on the side of he doesn't have the knowledge so he's just going to tell everybody but he's very much propagated all right here we go let's talk about black lives matter so this guy started it and here's what he said read that What we want in a, in, a, in a modern liberal democracy in our army is we want to turn violence on and off like a faucet. It oppresses black people. I would say it oppresses all people. Now you make the point that while killing may be uh, an inherent taboo, it's something that can be learned. The only way you make a frightened person react in a certain way is to drill it into them to make it a conditioned response. It's bigger than football, oppresses black people. And we're talking about violence. This initially emerged as a result of violence against black people, killing black people. Okay. This is some of that warrior training. He's saying it's okay that What's if you kill take? other people that aren't warriors. Conditioned response that as soon as you see an enemy, right. you kill. This, hap this is from just last week in St. Louis. Protests. That arose as a result of the, 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 the plea of police killing a young black man. If you can't make that decision, you need to find another job. Who was running from them and they were driving away from them and where all sorts of things happened, but the police was, the police officer got off. So they were running away from them and driving away from them. He's making excuses for the reason why the cop killed them. Why, if, if they're going away from the cop, that's not a deadly threat. They're not imposing force on the cop, they're going away from the cop. He even admitted that. He just said that they were running from the cop. That is not deadly force, not deadly threat. You do not need to kill somebody that's running away from you. Give chase or let them go and do an investigation. Find them out later. And so people went out into the street. And so the question is, what's it take to get people out into the street? Now you begin the process of orchestrating the instruments together in a symphony of death and destruction! Um, I think it takes like, I don't know, just killing like when they realize like their own people or their own kind is getting shot or getting killed or being oppressed by the cops, that's when it just takes them like, this is just it, like I have to protest. I have to protest. It's yes. done. Yeah. Something happens. Every species, every mammal has a powerful built-in resistance against killing their own kind. Something I see, it's just, it's done. Um, I'm out. I'm now, you make the point that while killing may be uh, an inherent taboo, it's something that can be learned. I'm in the streets. So let's look at the data. I want you to meet Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman, an aptly named police trainer who, for the last 20 years, has conducted training seminars in all 50 states for every federal law enforcement agency. Because I see signs like this, I please, police must stop shooting us. Oh. It's a genocide. I was going to put a sign up and I didn't take it down. Someone had a sign that said, it's a genocide of black people. It's something that can be learned. Right. Genocide of black people. 
The only way you make a frightened person react in a certain way is to drill it into them, to make it a conditioned response. Okay, so we're going to look at the data here. Go to the next one. People, how, people were killed by the police in 2016. How many people were killed by the police in 2016? So if you know anything about stats, cops kill about three people a day, 365 days a year. It should be about 1,000 to 1,200 people a year that cops kill if you just do the math. So the kids will probably get it wrong. What do you think? I don't want to guess because I got it so wrong last time. Now, you make the point that while killing may be uh, an inherent taboo, it's something that can be learned. No, that's okay. No, <laughs> guess, guess, guess. That's what this is about. I'm going to say a thousand. Um, this is all people. It's all people? All people. Wow. I think a thousand, too. What do you all think? What do you think? Come up with a number. Say it to the person next to you. What do you think? Dude, what do you think? 500? I don't, I don't know. I'm just like, I just what do you like, think, bro? Oh. Every species, every mammal has a powerful built-in resistance against killing their own kind. What's that? Two, three hundred? What do you think? Now, you make the point that while killing may be uh, an inherent taboo. It's something that can be learned. How much? Like it was last time. 1544. All right, here we go. 2016, 963. Okay? You both nailed it. You're good. Okay. And who are these people? When I talk about a warrior, we could talk about the Zulu warrior, the Apache warrior, many ways a noble model. What's their background? Right. But when I talk about warriors... Who are the people that got killed? It is a direct, intentional, overt reference to the knights of old. Of 963, how many do you think were black? Since the U.S. is 13% black out of 963 people, it should be about 130 black people killed. But since we're always overrepresented, I'd say about 260 would be the what it would be to show that we're overrepresented. Um, I would say about 600 will be black. 600. And then like the rest will be like maybe Hispanic. 600 like. black. What would you say? Probably like 500. How many were black? Turn to the person next to you. Come up with a number. So these kids, like most U.S. citizens, are bad at math. If the teacher wanted to get a real answer, he would have told the kids that the black population is 13% of the U.S. population. And then if they're overrepresented, how much do you think they're overrepresented? Two times, three times, four times, and what you would want right, to do is ready? multiply 13 Next by how many times you think they're overrepresented. Okay, so now that these go. kids don't know how to do math, he's just using that against them. Oh, I'm surprised. Okay. Yeah. So we're off, right? If you, you know, if you're, if you're, what do you think about that number? Um, this is actually kind of surprising. I honestly thought it would be more black people because they show more black people getting like, uh -huh. I know. They like make it seem like black people are always getting like killed by the cops more than it's just hard. That's all I see in media like on Twitter. I only seen one video of a white guy getting shot like seven times but that was that was just like a couple of days ago, apart from that. Uh-huh. What would no, you yeah, say? I find that kind of surprising too, but like I agree, like I see more media like showing black people getting killed by police than white people. So it's probably just like in my mind, since I see it more, then it happens more. I'm slightly confused as to the point here. Is he saying that it's okay for cops to kill white people? Um, I don't think that it's okay for cops to kill white people. I don't think that it's okay for cops to kill black people. I don't think it's okay for kill cops to kill anybody. But uh, he's justifying 
killing of all people, not just black people, but he's justifying cops just killing people, be they white, black, anybody. Straight up warrior training, kill them all. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, so, go. So, like I said, if black people were doubled, it'd be 260 people. It's 233, so kind of close, almost double. If white people were at third rate, there's 71% of the population, so there'd be 710 white people that would be killed. So they're underrepresented and black people are overrepresented. That's what really matters. The kids are, understand who's over and underrepresented. They just don't understand math. Go to the next one. So here's US population by ancestry, okay? So here we are, 63 right now, in mid 2016, 63% white, 17% Hispanic Latin. You see the numbers, right? So let's break this down and what we're talking about. Next slide. So here's the likelihood of being killed by the police. This is not, you know, if you're doing illegal activity, this is just breaking it down. So you have one in 250,000 for black people. White people, clearly you're less likely to be killed if you're white. And it's, are those numbers large? Are those numbers large to you? Yeah. They are? What will you, like? Is one in 250,000, is that high? So now he really starts to get into these kids' heads. So is one in 250,000, is that a high number? What is he doing? He's, no, it's not a high number, I don't know. He's getting them to question. And what he's doing is justifying these cops killing people. He's making it seem okay that cops are killing so little people. It's not that many. It's just one in 250,000. No. It's, I, I don't. <laughs> go ahead. No, just go ahead. I don't, I don't really know. Like, it, it's a lot. Like, that ratio is a lot different than the rest. She is 100% right. That ratio is way different than the rest. Uh, black people are getting killed at three times the rate of everybody else or something like that. It's not okay. It's not cool. Now, what he's doing is justifying the numbers, saying, oh, look, it's just such a low ratio. Even if it is a low ratio, why are black people getting killed at such more of a, 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 such more of a rate? If you don't have to kill white people at this rate, if you don't have to kill Asian people at this rate, if you don't have to kill Hispanic people at this rate, why are you killing black people at this rate? It doesn't make any sense. There's, there's got to be a reason, right? Which you can it. Okay, hang on. Okay. Why don't you answer it in the same way that you answered the other question? It depends. Yeah. I asked you the same question. Is know, that high? I know, I know. Yeah, no. It, it's not high, but it still does depend on the, the situation. I don't know what I'm trying to say. No, no, no. Hang on. I'll help you, though. No, I'm not trying to trap you, by <laughs> no, the no, way. Okay. The same answer flies yeah. here. Because it, cause it just depends. It's hot. It's still one out of 250,000. It's still high. One out of 250 million is high. If you're that one person, and if that's your family, like if that's someone in your family, it doesn't matter if it's one out of 250 million, it matters. If, you were, if, it's your, if your father's the only police officer that's hurt in the line of duty in all of the next 10 years, that's still too high. It's still unacceptable to you, right? What do you think about the number, one in 250,000? Um, I actually think that's, I don't know. I think that's pretty high, just because it's like a person, no matter like every life matters. So like, I think one out of 250,000 is like, I don't know, I honestly don't know. Okay, but listen, can you, can I throw something at you now? Yeah. Okay. We haven't talked about what these people were doing, what people were doing who were mm -hmm. killed by the police, right? So if I'm a criminal and I'm trying to shoot her father, yeah. and then her father's partner, somebody shoots me, then that's not a high number. That one in 250,000, I was trying to kill somebody and I got shot in the process. So that's not inherently a problem. It's either I kill this innocent person, like if I'm going to try to kill you, mm -hmm. let's say, right? Yeah. And the, somebody shoots me, yeah. you're like, thank God you shoot that, shot that knucklehead, right? Yeah. So right now, these numbers don't really mean a lot. Are we cool? They don't really mean a lot because we don't know what they are. So we can say, well, yeah, look, it's one in 250. Well, clearly, black people are more likely to get killed. Well, maybe black people are doing more things to provoke the police. So, like, we don't know that. We really don't know yet. So we got to go further. You see, like, you got to keep going further. Are you, are you there? Are you following me? Yeah, I know. Okay. All right, man. Are we cool? Got it? 
This is a thinking class right now. I'm walking you through some thinking. Okay, go to the next one. So 233 black people were killed by the police in 2016 out of a population of 39 million. Okay? How would you answer that young man's question? Am I next? How would you answer his question? You, you. Um, I would honestly say yes because I just feel like, I don't know, like I feel like it's harder being a black male. No, but what do you mean? Like, he, it, he's saying, am I, am I next? Yeah. Am I next? You're saying, yes, you are next? I mean, like, not like, I mean, like he better watch out the things he does. Okay, because, got it. Yeah. Yeah. Watch out. Yeah, just You're, watch out because like he's kind of like a target, you know, his appearance. You know, he looks like a typical black male, so. So is he next? Am I next? Possibly. We don't know. The thing is, we're overrepresented. We're doubly represented by our percentage, and we're like three or four times more likely to get killed than other people by their population. That is the point. Like, just because you can say that the numbers seem small or smaller than these kids thought they were going to be, Still, black people are being killed at an alarming rate compared to everybody else. If black people were getting killed at the same rate as everybody else, there would not be a problem. But there's a problem. Okay, so if he's holding a sign and then I'm holding the sign, or like, I don't know, somebody else who looks more like him, a white guy and a dude, that dude over there who looks like a hippie, right, in the front row. If that dude's holding a sign, you're going to say, yeah, this guy, you should watch your back more than that guy. Yeah, that's my opinion. Okay, no, that's cool. Yeah. What would you say? I, I think that opinion does make sense. Like, I agree with the, like, watch your back thing, but also, like, watch the situations you get yourself into as well. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. if you're in a more dangerous situation, then more can go wrong than if you're not. But I do agree that, like, if a white guy was holding that sign, it would be more likely for the black guy to Got have you. to be more in danger of getting hurt than the white guy. Okay. All right, let's go one more. Are we cool? Are, is everyone following here? Are we good? Okay, we're going to go one more. Ready? So how many of the 963 people were unarmed? In the United States, we have the right to bear arms. That is our Second Amendment right. This is what we're talking about here, right? Remember the story? It's like, if, I'm, if I got a gun to the, to, to the two of you, right? Like I have a gun to your heads. That's very different than if I'm just like walking up next to you or behind you and somebody sees me and shoots me because they think I'm going to do harm to you, right? It's like very different. If I have a weapon, if I don't have, if I say, hey, I'm going to kill these two people and I'm standing here and I have no weapon on me, I have nothing and the police shoot me anyway, it's very different than if I'm standing here with a knife saying I'm going to kill these two people. Okay, are we good with that? He keeps jumping back and forth, switching the goalpost on purpose to, to confuse the kids. He just said, if I was, said I was going to kill these two people, but then he's going to say how many people were armed or unarmed. We're allowed to be armed in the U.S., and that's different than saying you're going to kill somebody. It's a totally different situation. So how many of the 963 people were unarmed? How many do you think, they, how many do you think were unarmed of the 963? What do you think? Uh, <coughs> Unarmed. Unarmed. 963. We're talking white people. Hispan- How many do you all think? To point, turn to the person next to you. What do you think? How many of the 963 were unarmed? Okay, here we go. Go to the next slide. So here are the numbers. This was the most comprehensive analysis of... He's either saying that 517 people were practicing their Second Amendment right, or he's saying that he doesn't believe that you should have a Second Amendment right, or he thinks you should be killed for practicing your amendment or your rights. A knife is legal in most states. A vehicle is legal in every state. A toy is legal in every state. So you also got had other instruments black people get shot for carrying cell phones and all kinds of stupid stuff we're unarmed okay unknown that's just as bad as toys or other instruments it's not okay to be killing people like not even for cops it's not okay Good. How are you? Good. Uh, 
reason I pulled you over is you, your brake lights are out. Sir, I have to tell you, I do have a okay. firearm okay. on me. Okay, don't reach for it then. Don't pull it out. Don't pull it out. the data done by a research team at the Washington Post. It's not 100% accurate, but it's pretty accurate. So 69 unknown. Get your license, please. Get out of the car! Get out of the car! Oh. Why did you shoot me? Well, you dove head first back into your car. Do you see a belt violation, sir? I just pulled it off right there at the corner to pull in the gas station. Ah! Well, I got help coming to you, okay? I got help coming ah! to you. I'm sorry. But unknown enough that they didn't throw them in the unarmed category. So they were, you assume that the likelihood of being unarmed is, is equal percentage-wise, to ratio-wise to the other. And, you know, and in a vehicle, can we be clear about a vehicle? That's a vehicle trying to run over police. Toy guns. A lot of those people, of course, were committing suicide in all likelihood because that seems to be a form. What do you think about that number? Hang on. Can I ask you first? What do you think about that number? You said yeah. 600. I said 550. 500. And you said 400. We're unarmed. You said 500. We're unarmed. What do you think about that number? Thing. Not to mention that gross man likes to call his teaching killology. Um, I'm actually, I'm actually kind of like shocked. I honestly thought like, I'm not saying like the media like. I don't know, they just made it seem like, you know, the guy was innocent, you know, he was just trying to go about his way. Once you've made the decision to take a human life, you're a transformed creature, you're a predator. Okay, but I don't know, like, this is, I don't know the numbers they took or the guys they took it from or whatever. What does a predator do? They kill. Only a killer can hunt a killer. Are you emotionally, spiritually, psychologically prepared to snuff out a human life in defense of innocent lives? But I just think it's just crazy how five, 517 had a gun. I would think it would be less than that. Yeah, okay. To be you, honest. Yeah. yeah, so you certainly think it would be more. A couple things here. So he's either saying he's against the Constitution, that we shouldn't be having our Second Amendment rights, that if you have a gun, you should be able to be killed by cops. Like, so if you're a pro-constitutionist, you should be very against what this man is saying. Second, U.S. schools are terrible. They do terrible at teaching math, and U.S. citizens are terrible at math. They do not guess correctly. If you go ask a U.S. citizen almost anything, if you ask a U.S. citizen almost anything about numbers, they'll way over guess or way under guess. U.S. citizens, we are very bad at math. I'm really good at it, and I can see numbers really well. But he's just tricking these kids, right? If you overguess something, then kind of give them the ratio and explain to them that they're overguessing or overshooting or undershooting, and then try to find out why a little bit. Way Especially given that. what you just said about looking at your Twitter feed and yeah. Facebook and social media. And There's a story of a teacher who wrote... 10 problems on the board, math problems, got nine of them right, and missed one on purpose. And the kids come in and they start laughing. And it's like, what's wrong? And they point out the one problem that's wrong. And they don't notice the nine that he got right. So that's what's 
one of the things wrong with us now is that we only see the wrong stuff. We need to start looking at the good and, and things. so on, right? I mean, well, like, we know, like, the media just ex exaggerates everything, so I guess not to pay attention to it. So if this man were actually here to help, instead of saying not to pay attention to the media, he would talk about media training, how to use the media, how to use YouTube, Facebook, and all these other platforms correctly, rather than just avoiding them and then hearing stuff on the side. What do you think about the number? I'm actually pretty surprised by it too, but when I think about it more, I guess like since the media does portray more of those stories where the person is unarmed, so again, like it makes me think that there are more cases of unarmed things, but clearly there's not. You can see his tactics working. The kids are starting to question themselves and not be as confident. Now, when it comes to media, when you watch the news, they tend to report on hurricanes, earthquakes, trauma, stuff like that. You don't get news reports of people getting to work on time or flowers growing normally, right? The news is normally about kind of bad things because that's just what the news is, really. That is to say, you're going to get more news stories about cops doing the wrong thing than the right thing. You're going to get more news stories about anybody doing the wrong thing than the right thing. It's just how news is. So, 22 out of 233 black people who police killed in 2016 were unarmed. And I told him to get his hand out. I told him to get his ID, sir, and his driver's license. 22 out of 233. Okay? So now the question is, so that means you have a 0.6 chance in a million. This is the start to one of his bigger lies. 0.6 chance out of a million. Now, what does he mean by that? U.S. people, U.S. citizens do not understand numbers, right? I don't even think this guy understands numbers. I don't even know if this guy knows that he's lying. He might just be part of the system and just might be bought in that much. But here, right after this, listen, and then I'll come right back. 0.6 chance, about half of 1% in a million. This right here is a smoking gun that he either does not know what he's talking about or that he's doing propaganda. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, not that it matters, but he's a U.S. citizen. He doesn't understand numbers. Percentages doesn't work like that. Half a percent is going to be out of 100. A percentage means out of 100. But if to give him the benefit of the doubt, if you want to take half a percent of a million, there's going to be 5,000. So he's saying that 5,000 people out of every million are being killed in America by police, which is obviously not true. He is the reason that these kids think the number's so high because he says stuff like this. And if they go around and hear his training and only hear this clip of his training, and then they type it into the calculator like I just did, they will think that 5,000 people out of every million are getting killed, and then they will think the number is much higher. So his propaganda is way worse than any CNN or Fox News because he's telling these kids that 5,000 in every million are being killed. Like, he has no idea what he's saying. Metacognition is the awareness of one's own thought processes. It's one's thoughts about thinking. A major part of the learning process and a major factor in being competent in something is the ability, through metacognition, to recognize patterns, errors, and problems in one's thinking and then employ strategies to deal with and overcome them. Of being unarmed, black skin, and killed by the police. This man is a prime example of the Dunning-Kruger effect. When people don't know enough to not know they don't know enough, they think they know and they'll talk chin up and chest out just like this dude did, talking about five point, half a percent of a million people are getting killed. That's 5,000. That's insane, that's a huge number, and it's people like him who are confusing these kids. According to Dunning and Kruger, when someone is incompetent in an area, they lack metacognitive abilities in that area. As a result, this lack of awareness of their thought processes and knowledge prevents them from recognizing where and when they may go wrong. So now, when you answer that guy's question, am I next? What's your, what would be your answer to that question? Um, 22 out of 233 black people, I think that's a lot. Go with the so, bottom one. At the bottom? 0. 0.6 out of a million. If he stays on arm, you say, bro, listen, Spite of the, how you're dressed, despite of who you are, if you are, if you remain unarmed, 
right? Mm -hmm. That's the likelihood of you being killed by the police. He's justifying the police killings. He's saying it's not that much. Whenever you say it's not that much, you're trying to justify the action. If you want to purchase something and you say, oh, it's not that much, then you're justifying yourself that you can afford to do it. If you're killing people and you're saying, oh, it's not that many, then you're justifying the amount that you are killing. He's justifying the police killing people. I think it's a lot because even point one would be a lot to me. So it goes back to what, yeah. to what Brianna said. Mm -hmm. Brianna, right? Brenna. Brenna? Yeah. What Brenna said. It's like it's still to that one family. It matters. Okay. And so what I'm going to say to, you, to the two of you is, look, is the glass half full or is the glass half empty? This phenomenon can be fairly unsettling on the individual scale. To know that you don't know what you don't know. It's like it just depends. We can argue that that's a high number. We can argue that's a low number. But it's even more unsettling when considered on the collective societal scale. What's curious is that, in many cases, incompetence does not leave people disoriented, perplexed, or cautious. Instead, the incompetent are often blessed with an inappropriate confidence, buoyed by something that feels to them like knowledge, said Dunning. We can argue it's exaggerated. We can argue like, no, man, it's not exaggerated. It's still really high. Partly as a result of the Dunning-Kruger effect, people who are not qualified to speak on certain subjects are still some of the most confident and loudest who do. Like, what is it? You can make the argument in lots of different directions. But what I want to say is... More qualified individuals, rather, tend to be less loud and less simplistic, and instead, more thoughtful and cautious. Look, if we're going to make the arguments, and if we're going to get involved in protests, like, can you go to the next slide, bro? No, hang on, go to one more. That, if you're going to protest like that, but this whole thing is based on police violence against black and brown people. So if you're going to protest, really step out in this way, you got to know what you're protesting. And so, out of the lot here, the incompetent but confident amateur, the competent but cautious intermediate, or the exceptionally competent expert who is confident but struggles to understand and communicate with the layman, who is more convincing to a mass audience of individuals who do not know the difference between correct and false information? It's really important to understand what it is. You know what I mean? Is it like 600 unarmed people or is it, hang on, 42 or 48 or like what, what, what are we looking at here? Again, this man just said that 0.5% out of a million people are only 0.5% of a million people are hurt by cops. That's 5,000 out of a million. If he's talking about just black people, that's 65,000. If he's talking about all people, that's 1.75 million. But this is the Dunning-Kruger effect just straight up in action, right? You can see him with all his heart thinking that he knows something when he doesn't. He doesn't understand numbers, and actually he's making it worse if the kids listen to his numbers. Like... Is it a genocide? So when I see someone holding a sign up that says, stop the genocide of black people at a protest, and I'm saying, go back. Can you go back two sides? I wouldn't call that a genocide. It's seemingly become more and more common to have an opinion about nearly everything. There's a lot happening here, but that's not what I would call it. Maybe it's always been this way. Maybe having access to all the world's information, but only enough time to read the headlines and the incentive to still leave a comment has exacerbated this human tendency. And so for me, as someone who's talking about race relations, who sees these things from lots of perspective. Whatever the case, because of this and in combination with the Dunning-Kruger effect, some of the voices we hear the most of are the least qualified, useful, or accurate. They are rather voices of confidence and charisma, not nuance and care. It's really important that we know what we're talking about. The right voices, rather, are often quieter, harder to parse, or still looking for the right words and means to express themselves. So that we can be confident and have realistic and good conversations. But sometimes the greatest impact is silence. Because I agree with you. I mean, yeah, it's still high. And yet... And yet, whatever comes next is going to be an excuse for the cops to kill people. It's not what most people think. Does the world really need more voices? Or does the world need more careful voices? 
If I, if I took a microphone, if I went to that protest in St. Louis last week and I walked around with the microphone and I started asking people, hey man, how many people was it last year? How many people? In each one of those... Of course, the irony here, being a voice that is not silent. And even the people who are armed, it doesn't matter. It's a life, right? But if I start asking that question, people are going to give me these really, really high answers. I'm sure 5,000. Again, he's too ignorant to realize he said 5,000 earlier. Where would they come up with that number? Somebody goes around saying 0.5% of every million people get killed. How would they come up with 5,000? I wonder, what if they went to a calculator and took 5% or 0.5% and multiplied it by a million? I wonder what number they might come up with. Wait, it's on the screen. 8,000, I have no idea. It's like, no, nah, man. But the point here is not merely about being silent outright. It is about being carefully noisy at least attempting to be. It's impossible to have no opinions, but it is possible to have less or be more careful around how we hold the ones we do. That's not bringing us where we need to go, okay? Today, for the first time in centuries, there are warriors who wake up every morning and they don armor. Warrior training. And God has raised up warriors. Now let me define what I mean by warriors. 